Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Influential Women Podcast. I have the honor of sitting here today with Miss Candace Tarvella. Candace, I am so excited to have you here. Thanks for having me, Jenny. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I know you uh, you have been an influential woman for many years. That Thank as you. many of your friends and family know, you've had quite a journey the last several months. And yes. I kind of thought we would just start our podcast opening up with, you know, what's going on in your world right now? Well, uh, the last couple months have been a train wreck for me. Um, uh started back in, I'd say September. You know, I wasn't feeling good. We get sick. I got uh, like a cold, you know, and it just kept lingering on. And uh, I went to the doctor in probably the end of November, finally, because it wasn't getting any better. And my doctor um, said there was like a polyp in my nose. And so she referred me to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And so I got in at the end of November to go see my ear, nose, and throat doctor. And I'll never forget that day. Um, She she looked in my nose and um, she saw what my doctor thought was a polyp. And she said she wanted to do a biopsy on it. And so um, they did the biopsy right there. And a couple days later, I was at work and... I received a phone call, and uh, the doctor told me that what they had found was actually a sinonasal cancer, and so um, uh, those those words dropped me to my knees. You know, I'll never. I I didn't even know there was there was a sinonasal cancer. You know, how common is that? It's super. the The type of cancer I have is extremely rare. Rare. There's um, less than 2,000 cases diagnosed every year, um, especially for the type of sinonasal cancer that I have. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, she told me, you know, what, we didn't know what route to take because we hadn't received the full pathology of the type of cancer at that time. So we, we were kind of on a little waiting game. And so she sent off the lab to Michigan and a couple days later, we heard more devastating news that the type of cancer that I have is um, very aggressive and rare. Um, it's usually more common in males, um, men that maybe work in like a metal factories or wood factories. I'd had none of the um, like none of the factors that would, you know. There's you to get it. Yeah, exactly. Nothing that I did caused me to get it. Just kind of bad luck. Um, So we we were going up to Denver to see multiple doctors at that time. And the doctor I ended up getting, um, I remember, called me late on uh, Wednesday night. And he told me, he said, hey, I'm looking at this tumor that's in your, your face. And we need to get it out. And um, I met with him the next day. And my family was with me. My family and my boyfriend was went to the doctor with me. And um, worst, worst, one of the worst days of my life is sitting there having him tell me how scary it is, you know, to sit there and have him tell you, well, if we don't get this out, you're looking at months. Um, it, you know, I, I have two small babies, a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old. And just as a mama, you know, you never want to leave your babies. So I, uh, I asked him, okay, what do we do? You know, like, let's, let's go. And he says, well, we're going to need to do surgery right away. And so I said, okay, let's, let's do it. And so we, he scheduled right away. I was in surgery on the 15th of December. And um, that day, I had a 12-hour surgery with a big group of doctors. I had a neurosurgeon. I had my, my head and neck doctor. And I had an um, 
multiple things going because the tumor showed in the, the scans that the, it was in my face, it was close to my eye orbital, and it was um, near my brain. And oh, wow, a lot of different. Yeah. And the, the brain, the way the MRI looked, we couldn't tell if it was protruding into my brain or if it was just sitting right below it. And so that's the reason they wanted to get the neurosurgeon involved. So um, I am beyond blessed to have the group of doctors that I, that I had and the amount of people. I'm truly, truly humbled by the amount of people that have just been praying for me because I am a firm believer in the power of prayer. And I think the surgery went the way the surgery did because... I have the amazing group of doctors and the amount of prayers that I had for me. Absolutely. Well, I know everybody, this whole town was praying for you. It, and it's crazy. You don't think you make that much of an impact on people's lives until, unfortunately, something like Times this happens. Like this. Absolutely. And um, that's how loved you are. Thank you. It's been truly humbling because I, I can't thank everybody enough for their, everybody who's reached out and brought my family meals, been there for my children and my parents, and and just, it's just been a humbling experience, and um, the day of the surgery, it was a 12-hour surgery, I, I cannot imagine, you know, it's easy for me, because I just go in, and I, I go to sleep, but I just have my mom, you know, only one person would do, during COVID could be in the hospital with you, and to have my mom out there waiting for 12 hours. I'm sure she was a wreck. And and she just, um, her faith is so strong, and she's such a strong woman, you know, praying for me and my dad and my brother and my, my boyfriend, my kids, and just everybody was gathered in prayer. Mm-hmm. And uh, the doctors were able to go in and remove the, the tumor completely. They were still a little concerned about a a spot by my eye. So um, they wanted to send more pathology off for the spot around my eye. So um, it it was truly amazing that they were able. They told me if it would protrude it into my brain, they would have went in and sewn me right back up. And it was amazing that tumor was sitting right underneath it and had not protruded into my brain. So, um, again, just amazed by the amount of prayers and the amazing doctors. Um, But they did get the pathology back on the area around my eye, and it turned out it was cancer. So they had to go back in five days later, and they removed my right eye in order to be completely cancer free. And so um, I was good with that, you know, absolutely. you know, so I uh, told them, yep, absolutely. Let's go back in. And um, they removed my eye and uh, I started, you know, it was, it's great to hear the word you're cancer free, you know, to get all those results back that they had clear margins um, that I'm cancer free. And then I started aggressive treatment, um, with chemotherapy and radiation January 25th. So I've been in treatment for the last six weeks. I just finished my last radiation appointment on Friday and I have my last chemo appointment tomorrow. So I'm extremely excited about that. I'm excited because I'm sure that's been a journey that you never expected that you'd be going through oh absolutely what was that like because I I know other people who have been through not your situation but similar situations and they talk about chemo and what it's really like I mean take me through that process and that journey you went through yeah it was um so chemo has it's definitely no fun you know the the medicine that they give you kills any any microscopic cells so I'm thankful for that Um, But it does make you extremely sick. So, um, you know, nausea, nausea and vomiting. The doctors have been really good about making me as comfortable as possible with, you know, nausea medicines. And and, um, again, I'm just, 
asking for everybody's prayers there because it's been such a hard road. You know, I have a lot of people praying and so that I don't get as sick. Um, and the doctors have been really good at making me um, comfortable and they they preconditioned my, my uh, chemo treatments with a lot of anti-nausea medicine. So it's been hard, but um, you're getting through it. And then the radiation, um, you know, it's causes a lot of swelling and and the, the sunburn and it's like the worst sunburn ever but um and aloe vera doesn't help huh? yeah it does not <laughs> help and i lost my sense of taste really the and radiation that wasn't the covid nope wasn't the covid but it is no fun not being able to taste your food mm. <laughs> so um but we're getting through it and i'm just so happy to be at the end of it and then you know here at the end of may um we'll be getting more, we'll have a CT done or a PET scan and and, uh, and another MRI to see, make sure nothing's returned. So we have a lot of prayers until May to make sure that. that it comes back good and you're cancer free and you can move on with your life. Absolutely. That's my prayer and and just, just getting through it. It's been a nightmare. It's been very fast, you know, diagnosed on the 1st of December and in surgery the 15th. And so it's been such a I feel like sometimes it's hard to even think like, oh my gosh, this all just happened. It's hard to absorb. But then I'm sure the days are super long and it feels like forever at the same time. Yeah, I'm anxious to get back to school, back to my students and back to work and to have my days, you know, just my life back again. Absolutely. Well, I have to just stop and say you look beautiful. Like, well, thank you for going through everything you've just gone through. You, you haven't skipped a beat. Like well, you are you, still Jenny. as gorgeous as always. And I inside and out, it. I mean that truly. It's been hard. It's been hard. Um, how have you, I mean, I guess just from Facebook looking out, how have you been so strong through this? Oh, I feel like I haven't been strong, you know, sometimes. People keep telling me, oh, you're so strong. And um, some days I don't feel strong. You know, it's been hard. I take, I find that if I look too far ahead, I find myself worrying about things I don't know if I need to worry about yet. And so um, I've had, my family's always right sitting there reminding me like, hey, remember we're worrying about today and that's it. We'll get through today and then tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow. So as long as I continue to remind myself um, to just take it a day at a time and remember why I'm, all, why I'm doing this. You know, I love, I love my life. I have a wonderful life, and I have two babies that I love with all my heart and soul, and I'm going to fight like hell to get through this. Yeah, you are. I know you are. And I just pray that May is just the news you've been, and everybody's been been hoping for absolutely has your faith changed at all during this um we you know I've always been a faithful person um but I think scary times often turn you to you know hold tight to faith and um you know we pray the rosary with my kiddos it's so cute because um my brother and his Wife and kids are living with with me right now because they're building their their house, and so they're living with us. And we we get our rosaries out at night. And my little nephew, he's three years old. He calls it his necklace that makes his Zia feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and so he'll run and grab his little rosary, and he doesn't quite know all of it yet. But he'll sit there and he'll mumble <laughs> the words like he knows what he's saying. And it's so cute because they picked up on it and they, they know parts really well. And and my, my nephew just turned seven and my kiddos, they'll say it with us. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, amazing to see everybody praying for me. They did a, a prayer chain the day I had surgery. Um so that all day I would have somebody praying for me. They did like little 15-minute intervals. Oh, also who the, came up with that? The, my cousin Stacy. Of course she is, did. Uh -huh. She's and a so gem. It was so cool to see somebody was praying for me all day long. And so, like I said, I'm a, such a firm believer in the power of prayer. 
And I've been just humbled beyond belief to see the outreach of people. I was um, at a, the dentist one day, and I had a, a nurse come over to me and tell me, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I know you don't know me, but I'm praying for you. Uh-huh. And that that's just amazing. And I can't thank everyone enough for their prayers and their thoughts and their well wishes because I truly believe, you know, that's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. And and how have your kids taken this? Because I'm just like you in the motherhood wor- world. Like, we live and breathe for, for our, our children. Babies. Absolutely. Like, they are everything. And how have they taken it all? It's been hard. You know, when I told them, um, they were upset. But, I, re- you know, like I said, I tell my babies everything they need to know. But I do try to keep the scary away from them as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I answer all their questions, um, and I just always remind them that I'm okay, you know. Um, I've had bad days, you know, where I've been sick, and and it worries them, and I tell them, I'm, I'm okay, you know, I and I am, I'm okay. You're so strong. It's just getting through it, and we have our good days, and we have our bad days, but they're, they've been so supportive, you know, like, my my son this morning, hey, mom, you doing okay? You need me to get you anything, you know? And my daughter, she she has wanted to be at every Denver trip possible. So it's just they've been such a rock for me during awesome. this time. And you've had to make a lot of Denver trips, right? Oh, constant. We were going back and forth every day to because, you know, we do. I had my radiation in Denver. So um, back and forth every day because it was hard the first week I stayed up there in Denver for the week. And I miss home. You know, I like being home and in my own bed at night. And so we decided to just do the back and forth every day. And so we did that. And all your family just kind of pitched in. Absolutely. You're yep. like, I'm taking candy today. They, my family's been amazing. You know, they just jump in when they when needed. And I had a cousins volunteer and my parents. And it's just been amazing. Your parents, I mean, you talk about you being a mama bear. Oh. I know your mom is too, and you're very close with your parents. How have they been through all of this? Uh, I, honest, my parents are unbelievably just amazing. They're just amazing, and uh, they're my strength. They're my rock. You know, they're my people. And it, whenever I have, like, a bad day or just get scared, they're just there to call me and to remind me, oh, we got this. You know, they're my rock, and they have been amazing. I know I couldn't have gone through this without them, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. You and, know, and, and what I, about Brandon? And Brandon, uh, like, again, you know, he's just been there through it all. And, you know, I've endured a lot of changes, and he sits there and reminds me of how beautiful I am. And if I find myself looking too far ahead, he's, he reminds me, hey, Again, we're we're dealing with today. We're not going to worry about tomorrow. We're going to get through today, one day at a time. And so I'm just extremely, extremely blessed. You are blessed because you have so many supportive people around you to have that love and that support. And I mean, absolutely, can you imagine going through this without them. I couldn't I, honestly. I couldn't. And you're teaching at where? Where? At I'm at Sunset, Sunset Park Elementary School. Yeah, I've been out since December. Um, but can't wait to get back to my second grade kiddos. Second grade. I'm sure they've missed you. Have they made you cards? Oh, and yeah. All the good I, I've stuff? gotten cute little pictures and cards and, and they're just, they're just amazing. I miss them so much. I miss teaching. I miss my, my staff. It, it's just, I miss my, the, the people I work with so much and, and all my kiddos. They've, they're amazing and I can't wait to get back. And how long have you been teaching now? Gosh, <laughs> forever. You're uh, like, I don't want to say years, out loud. years, <laughs> I think, 16 years. Oh, my gosh. So I taught online for a long time, and and then I was at um, CCA for a couple years, and now I think this is my sixth year at Sunset Park. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I've been teaching for a long time. And what made you want to become a teacher? Oh, I wanted, I played school when I was a little girl, you know. I mm-hmm. loved being 
sitting there in front of the stuffed animals and grading papers. I was the kid that <laughs> wanted to stay in at recess and help the teachers grade papers. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, what was I thinking wanting to grade all those <laughs> now, papers? Now how do I get a mini-me? <laughs> exactly. Like, where are they when I need them? <laughs> I, so I always wanted to be a teacher. And then um, I actually started school uh, going to college for pharmaceuticals. Okay. And I did not enjoy it at all. I didn't like the classes. And I just told myself, no, it's just not for me. I just, I want to be a teacher. And so I changed my major my sophomore year, and here I am. There you go. I just finished my master's last year. So that was really cool. Thank you. Yes, I was super excited to do that. Took me a couple years, but I got it done, and I was pretty proud of myself for getting that done. Absolutely. So, you know, you're on the podcast of Influential Women. Who has been influential in your life? Who's inspired you? Um, definitely my mother. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I just knew it because we're so much alike in yep, so many my areas. My mama, she's, like I said, she's the strongest person I know. Mm-hmm. Um, she's my rock, and um, she's just, she's a fireball, you know? Like, she is just very, very, her strength amazes me she's she's been through a lot you know we've lost a lot of family Um, my mom lost her brother when she was young to leukemia she lost both her parents at a a younger age you know um they were in their 60s when they passed my my nana and papa and my then she lost my um my uncle paul her brother to pancreatic cancer and so um my mom's a very strong woman and uh, her, like I said, her strength just amazes me. And I, I'm constantly talking to my mom. You know, like I, I look to her for advice, and and she's she's definitely been an inspiration to me in my life. She's your best friend. Absolutely. Does I she talk call to her you like ten everything. times a day? Yeah, all that's the time. What I was say. We talk every day for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. My phone rings and kids goes. Is that goose? <laughs> like they just know. I mean, yep. you know, when you have yep. that kind of relationship, do you think that's where you get your strength from? Absolutely, her and my dad for sure. I'm a big family person. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up in a tight knit family, um, and not just me and my brother and my parents, but the whole family. You know, Sunday dinners at my nana's house when we were young, and the whole all my cousins. You know, yeah, you have a um, large Italian we family, do. girl. We do, and like vacations, and so. Um, my family's my rock, you know, my my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, they've all been there for me during this, and I admire and look up to my aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. What's one of your favorite family traditions? Oh, we we do the Santa train every year. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, we love doing that. Mm-hmm. We bake cookies every year, so Christmas cookies. Okay, sugar to, cookies? Oh, good. And Not pit cells? We do those too. Okay. And uh, the biscotti. And so we do a lot of cooking and baking and stuff like that. And uh, we do a lot of fun vacations together as a family. I was just talking to all my aunts and uncles last week about trying to put together another big vacation. Because, you know, I brought my kids to Disneyland. We, we've been to San Diego, Legoland, all those trips, you know. And then the ones they look back on were the ones that were like small little vacations with the whole family, family. Mm-hmm. lots of so, more memories made. exactly and so it's that's the the fun part for us is getting together as a big group and uh, we always go up to rye okay at the little pavilion up in rye yeah. mountain park mm-hmm. and during the summers we're there constantly and the kids play in the creek and Everybody brings chicken and a side dish, and yeah. we have huge little get-togethers there. I love that. Yeah. Well, you have to plan one in May. Yeah. With good news. Exactly. We're going to celebrate at the end of May for clear scans. Are we going to have champagne? There we I go. Mean, can you drink right now? And, uh, well, I haven't because of all the medications. Okay. That's I'm what I, I was like. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if she needs wine right now or shots of tequila. I was going to have it ready, but I didn't know. That'll, that'll be when we celebrate okay. for sure. Yes. Well, I'd love to have a celebratory drink with Yes, you. definitely. I would love that too. We'll so, get Christy down here. Oh, and that's how we first met with was with Christy. With Christy. Yep, yep. She, you know, she's been the one that's been updating me, you know, personally on a personal level because you know, a lot of people think about you and pray about you and they don't want to ask, you know, 
what's going on because you get bombarded. I'm sure it's just been overwhelming, the, the response. The amount of people that have reached out has been truly humbling. Can you even keep up with it? I do my best to. We're still writing thank yous <laughs> and trying to make sure we thank everybody that has because people, honestly, they have gone above and beyond for my family and I, and I truly can't thank everybody enough. So growing up, I'm sure you always knew you wanted to be a mom. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And tell me, tell me the first time you found out you were going to be a mom. Oh, I'll never forget. Um, I, we, the doctor had told me, you know, wait a while uh, and we'll get off your birth control and then it, it'll probably take like months. Well, it didn't. <laughs> and so we were a little surprised by it, but I'll never forget. I was so excited. I could not wait. I started um, picking out stuff for the, the nursery, like, mm-hmm. the first week I found out. Like, I wanted to get it all ready. I was just... And then for my daughter, because my son was first, and then my daughter, um, we, we, we had been trying for, like, four months. And then I'll never forget. It was... Like, we actually went to dinner that week with, that I found out. Oh, really? With Kira. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. We, we had went to dinner, and I had taken a test that day, and it came back negative. And then on Thanksgiving Day, I took another test, and it came back positive. And I remember grabbing my son, and I told him, I said, guess what? You're going to be a big brother. And he said, cool, Mom. And um, I remember I, and we found out she was going to be a little girl because I didn't know – and up until you know, like the sixteenth week, mm-hmm. but I told him you're gonna you're gonna have a little sister, and he was excited. So, oh, so is he the best big brother ever? Sometimes, yes. They have their moments because <laughs> they fight. They, they fight. Oh no, the, he's so good to his sister, and she's good to her brother. They they uh, they love each other very much. Tell me your favorite things about Vito. Vito, Vito's got such a kind heart. He. Uh, He's my stressor, you know, he's like his mama, he worries a lot, and, uh, but Vito, he's got a heart of gold, that kid, he just has the biggest heart, and my Gianna, she, um, she, she's gonna do something in the field where she takes care of people, because she is like my little mother hen, Mm. she loves babies, oh, she loves, my, my cousin has a little, almost a year old, and just yesterday, she's sitting there with her on her lap, and Wants to babysit her and wants <laughs> to do all the fun stuff, even if it's changing diapers. She just is my little mother hen. Aww. They seem like just, the, I mean. They're, they're great kids. Awesome kids. Yeah. And what's one value you hope that you instill in them? The value of family. That's always my number one. You know, their their family is, is going to be there for them no matter what, you know. And that's what I grew up with. My family's my everything, my rock. Do you have a favorite cousin? <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble. I know, because you have so many cousins. There's too many to count. How it's, many do you have? Oh, gosh. You don't even know. Too, too many, yeah. Too many to count. I, but what's so neat is my cousins are like close brothers and sisters, too, you know? And even like my uncles. My Uncle Kelly's only... He's so awesome. 10 years, 11 years older than I am. So, I mean, we just have such a tight, close-knit relationship. And I love that about my family. Mm-hmm. You guys are so blessed. Like, the whole Alfonso clan and, you know, I don't know any of the Whittemores. But no, the, and then the Whittemores, too. My, my cousin, um, Tara, she was just over last night with my grandmother. You know, we're very close to them. I'm very excited. They live here in Pueblo now. My grandma uh, lived in Greeley my whole life. So they just moved to Pueblo How awesome. about a year ago. And so I'm, it's so nice to have them close They're never going to want to leave Pueblo. Oh, I, that's the thing about Pueblo. Like we have all of our family members here and it's so hard to leave because exactly. we love our family. I, absolutely. And that you know, that's what I keep telling my kids, family and your faith. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I want my kids to, to lean on. I love that. And, you know, the biggest question in Pueblo is what high school did you go to? South high school, baby. I knew you were a Southsider. <laughs> Do you yeah. still think the, the cannon bloom, booms black? Black, yes, yep. absolutely. And, and tell me about your relationship with your brother. And how has it oh, been gosh. with him living with you during all of this? And 
my brother and I have always had such a good relationship. I mean, he's always, he's younger than I am, but he thinks. I know anybody that yeah, wanted to date him had an answer to, to you. My, and that was not oh. a good thing. <laughs> or vice versa, which wasn't a good thing either. <laughs> Cause he, he's my protector, you know, even when we were little, he's younger than me, but he's always been my protector. And uh, yeah, they moved in at the end of October. And it's it's actually been fun. You know, it's been really fun. The kids love it. Oh, yeah, because they have their they, cousins. They get a constant day. sleepovers, right. you know. And um, they've it's been a godsend because of what I've been going through. You know, they've been there to help watch my dogs. And ha- they've had the kids several times speak when I've been back and forth and it's, it's honestly been a blessing that they, it worked out like this, that they were there for me. Him and his wife have been amazing during this time. Do you think in, in some way, like you guys have even gotten closer, which is even hard to imagine because oh, you're already so close? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what is some advice you could give somebody that's going through what you're going through right now? How do you do it? Oh, it's so hard. Like I said, I take it day by day. Um, I I also am very faithful. And so, um, you know, you look at certain things and people, you know, you look at prognosis and I don't want to, I don't want to look at the prognosis of something because I believe, you know, science goes so far, but then comes God, mm-hmm. you know, and no matter what I'm told, I'm, I'm going to have a belief in my heart that I'm okay and that I'm going to get through this. And so I'm just going to put my faith in God. And what have you been doing for yourself to get through? <laughs> you know, like, are you doing some self care? Like, I'm worried about self, what are you no, doing self, for you? You know, I I just put my faith in God. I pray every day and, and I just, I stay positive. I try not to let any negative thoughts enter enter my mind. You know, I just, I'm, I'm very positive about what's to come. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. You're just incredible. Thank you, Jenny. I, I love appreciate you. you. I, I do. You too. I love you and I adore you. And I'm just, I'm so blessed that you're sitting with me here today. Uh, I'm I've been thankful dying to, you've, you've had Just you dying had to, to see you and just get to know what's, you know, what's the journey to come and, and what's coming. Um, if you had to... Pick a song that described you. Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. What would it be? I have no idea. That's a toughie. I'll have to think about that one. A song that describes me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a song that describes you? (laughs) <laughs> hey you can't you, you cannot do that that is not fair this is yep nope i don't know i'm gonna think of that now. that's a tough one or a quote a quote um so i work at a leader in me school okay and um i have a personal mission statement mm-hmm. and my personal mission statement i came up with years ago but it's be bold be strong and be brave and i love that absolutely and that you know even, can, you know, what I've gone through here recently, it, I find myself saying that. Be bold, be strong, and be brave. And so uh, my personal mission statement. I love it. And uh, do you have a bucket list? Oh, yeah. I do have a bucket list. What's on your bucket list? I got I to gotta try to get brave enough to try some of those things on my bucket list. But I do want to skydive one day. Oh. But I don't know if I'm brave enough yet. You know, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, airplane. has never seemed like the right, <laughs> the right thing right to idea. do me. However, maybe going through something like this, you're like, screw it. I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. 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 Would Brandon do that with you? Oh, Brandon would totally do it for sure. He would definitely do it. But I don't know. I, I think it would. I might need to be given a gentle nudge to do it. Right. <laughs> and uh, is he going to propose anytime soon? I don't know. What's the story with that? You know, we've. I'm being a single mom. Um, is I, I want to make sure everybody's ready, you know? Yeah. Everybody's ready, including my babies. So um, we've taken it super slow, but it's been great. Yeah, you guys are so cute together. He's just a genuine guy. Oh, absolutely. He's he's amazing. He's been so good to me and the kids. He's, What's your favorite thing about him? 
I would say his his outlook on life. He's got such a positive outlook. Like I said, he's just been he's been such a huge support and like his encouragement and his positivity has been exactly what I needed during this time. Well, God puts people in our life for a Absolutely. Reason. 100%. And what is your best and worst quality? My best and worst quality? Worst quality probably I have a temper. I get I have a temper. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a temper. And Italian temper, right? It, it just it's comes with Italian it. Italian girl, you just, just have a little temper exa- with it. It's just a little temper. Yeah, it just yeah. comes out when it needs to. <laughs> and then I don't know, my best quality. Um, I would say I'm a patient person. Mm-hmm. Patience. Do you think you've learned that being a mother? Or have oh, you absolutely. Always had patience. No, I don't. I think you. It gets better as you go. Because mm-hmm. I was never a patient person, and then having children. <laughs> Holy cow, I have learned a ton of patience. Oh, yeah, and a teacher, you know. Oh, being yeah. a teacher requires patience, and I think, yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite thing about teaching? Oh, the kids, for sure, 100%. I just love being around those kids all day. I have I, Second grade, I have I've fallen in love with second grade. You're like, I'm not going to, don't ask me to teach fifth grade I or really kindergarten. I really love second grade. They're just so sweet and um, the questions and the, the, I just love it. They're so innocent. Mm-hmm. I just love teaching. I really do. And do you have an all time favorite student that pops up? All my babies are so they're they're great. And so no favorites. I love them all. No favorite. No favorite cousin. No favorite student. <laughs> love them all. Love them all. Yeah, definitely. So your bucket list. Let's go back to that. So skydiving. Skydiving. I, what else? I definitely want to make it to Italy. Oh, you've never been to Italy. Never been to Italy. So maybe this year's the year. Oh, I would love that. Never been to Italy. So I want to take my mom too. You know, she wants to go to Italy. New York. I want to go to New York. Mm-hmm. Never been. I like, I want to travel more. Absolutely. Things like that. I took my mom when she turned 60. I cashed out my, my bonds and we went to Italy and it was the best trip. Where did you guys go? We, um, well, we went to London. Oh. In Paris, just it was just a couple days, but then we went to Venice, Florence, Rome, and then Positano. Wow! And so, if you need help booking, I would love to. Oh, I mean, because it's just a trip I'll never forget. Mm-mm. And it was Absolutely. special just being, you know, you and your mom. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. Especially awesome. she's your influential woman too. Like she's your rock. She's your everything, and we never know how long we have. We never know, you know, our parents, you know, you just never know. We're so never promised of, tomorrow. That's for sure. Absolutely. No, so it's like, book it and go. You won't regret it. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, I hope someday soon. Someday it would be soon. some, it would be really cool to do that with my mom. Yeah. What's uh, one of your favorite memories of your mom growing up? Oh, goodness. Favorite memories with my mom. We've had a lot of good times. You know, I would say my we did sports during the summer. We did track during the summer, and uh, we were on. Oh yeah, you were a big track girl. Uh huh. Huh? Yeah. Do you still run today? Oh no, running. No running. (laughs) Not so much knees. The knees are giving out. (laughs) Sucks getting old. (laughs) But we would we would travel with the team during the summer, and doing all those things with my parents. It was so much fun. Uh, traveling all just a lot of good memories and her and I went to uh I made it to the the final jun- junior olympics and it was louisiana it was in baton rouge louisiana oh, wow. and her her and I went it was just her and I that trip and uh I'll never forget that trip it was so much fun what was so fun like what was the highlight oh just going to different restaurants and it, the humidity there it was such a different and, you know, like you weren't used to it. Mm-hmm. And I remember just walking outside and automatically just being like wet. <laughs> You're like my hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we, we we just had fun, you know, going to the track meets. And it was just a good experience for us. So you you used to run. You don't run anymore. What do you do? I was a high hobbies? jumper. Oh, I, I, I was see a that. high jumper. I think I remember hearing that. Now yes. That uh-huh. You made the paper. Yeah, you're I, a big I, deal, Candace. I was a I was a good high jumper. I took third my my senior year at the state championship. And have you ever coached? I, I so I was coaching. I was helping um, Bert White 
at South High School Coach. Okay. And so I was doing that a couple years ago. I did it. And then last year with COVID, we didn't get to. So I'm hopeful for the future to help help out where I can. That would be awesome. Yeah, I like it. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. Okay. So what other hobbies do you do that's, that's fun? You don't run, but what do you do for fun? Oh, my kids and I are big movie people. Yeah, so we have what we call pajama parties, oh, and we it. get in our pajamas, and we pop popcorn, we go loaf and jug, and we get a bunch of candy, mm-hmm. come home, pick a movie, that's, that's our thing. I love it, because I'm a big movie person. I love it. I went to the theater yesterday for the first time in like a year and a uh-huh. half. It's crazy. Do y'all do the theater, too? I can't wait to get back to Tinseltown. Or... My son went for the first time last week, and... Uh, he was just saying the same thing. Gosh, mom, we we haven't been to the movies in ages. And I'm like, I know. Do you Hopefully. know you could rent it out for 90 bucks? No kidding. Yeah. So I know you have a large family. I'm just saying that <laughs> might be an option <laughs> there, for there you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm excited to get fun. back to that. Yeah. But that's what we do. We just hang out. And like I said, just little things with my family. I, I'm excited to get back to the mountains this summer. We do that, and the kids like riding their bikes, so we go on little bike rides. Just hang out. Just hang out. We're pretty low-key. Pretty simple. Yeah. The simple life is a good life. Absolutely. We keep it simple. Would love to hear about how this has changed your intimacy with God and how your sweet babies. We already talked about your babies, but. Well, I'm definitely, you know, I've always been a faithful person. I've always had a deep belief in God, and um I just continue to put my faith in him and pray every night and pray every morning. And as I go through things that are hard, you know, I I pray Mm -hmm. during treatment. And, um, you know, I just put everything in God's hands. And what do you do for self-talk to get you through this? I just keep it positive, you know, and and I tell myself, you know, I'm not... I, I I need my kids, and my kids need me, and I'm going to get through this with the help of God and Jesus, you know, just, I'm going to get through this. And what do you want young girls to know about your leadership, being a strong woman? <sighs> that, that anybody can be a strong person, you know, it's it's about your outlook and your your strength, the strength you have inside you, and um. I believe anybody can be a strong person. Like I said, sometimes I don't feel strong. People tell me I am. I, sometimes I don't feel that way. But I do my best to stay positive and just take it a day at a time. Mm-hmm. And what's the single most important advice that you've ever got from somebody? Oh, no, that's hard too. The single most important advice that somebody's ever given me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's tough. I've received a lot of good advice. A lot of good advice. None just sticks out. No, I can't say that one really does. And that's okay. And what motivates you and what keeps you up at night? Your kids motivate you. My kids are my motivators for sure. Yeah, Yeah, my kids are my part of my motivation, my job, part of my motivation. Mm -hmm. I like I said, I love being a teacher. And, and what was the second part of that? And what keeps you up at night? Things that keep me up? A lot of mm-hmm. things keep me up at night. I'm a worrier. Yes, I'm a mom. It comes with worry. Um, teaching comes with worry. Things like that. Little things. And, and, you know, of course, this has been part of my worries lately. But like I said, I try to stay positive and, and put it. Have and you go- been sleeping? Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, I sleep. I sleep okay. Yeah. Which of your greatest qualities and personal traits do you see most in Gia and Vito? Okay, let's see. So Vito has, um, I would say, a huge heart. And I think I have a big heart. I mean, I love, I love big, you know. And my, mm-hmm. my son, I could say, he has that quality. Um. And my daughter, she's a nur- She's like the little motherhead, like I said, the little nurturing. And I think she's she get that's her best quality for sure too. And if you could give yourself one bit of advice, what would it be? To continue to be positive, stay positive, and 
take it a day at a time. Don't worry about the, the things later. Mm-hmm. And is there anything else you want to add about your journey that maybe I didn't ask? I don't think so. You know, I think you covered it. I just, I want people to know how thankful I am and blessed that they're in my life because they've truly made such a difference in my life since I've been diagnosed with their kindness and their, their, I mean, I've received so many generous donations and just people reaching out to dinners that been dropped off on our porch and the support that they've given my, my children and our family. I just can't thank you enough. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And what can they continue doing? Just continue praying for us. So keep Candace on your prayer list. Absolutely. She needs it. We still have a couple months to go until May. But tomorrow, are you going to do anything to celebrate your last day? You know, chemo doesn't make me feel very good for a couple weeks. So Okay, so it's a couple weeks after. A couple weeks after. It usually takes a good three weeks to finally start getting some energy back. So hopefully... And how long will you do chemo? Just one day? So chemo is one day. Uh huh. One day. So they did it every third week. Yeah. And so tomorrow's my last one. I'm so happy to I'm get happy it behind for me. you. Yes. I'm I'm thank happy you. For you. So I'm, I'm glad to be done with treatment soon. That's a huge celebration. And then is your goal to go back to teaching? Yes. When, when I, will you know that? Well, we got to wait for my immune system to get a little stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, But my goal is to return as soon as possible. Gotcha. Yeah. And what does the word influential mean to you? Um, Influential. um, The way to inspire others. You, that you've made an inspiration. You've been an inspiration to someone. And I would say you've been a huge inspiration from the teaching world, from all your students, from your family, and then now being part of this journey you know, you have just inspired so many people. Thank you, Jenny. And I'm so grateful it. for you taking the time and being here with me today. Thank it, you for having me. It means the world. It means a lot to me to be here. So thank you. Yes. That's a wrap on today's Influential Women with Miss Candice Tarvella. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, thank you.